Today, we'll be looking at the God Mode Administration Interface. Using this interface, we'll be able to do such things as edit security groups, set mandatory field, change the names of fields, and add custom fields onto the different screens. Now, one of the most commonly edited areas of the MEX system is the Work Order Details screen. It's where your users spend most of their time, so it's worth tidying it up and simplifying it, and making it more specific to your organization's requirements. Let's jump into the Work Orders listing and open the details of one of our Work Orders. Now, my objective here is I'm going to need to remove a number of tabs that I don't need in my business. I will also make a few fields mandatory, and I will rename a couple of fields as well. I access God Mode from the System menu. So I click on the System menu option in the top right corner of the screen, and then select God Mode from the displayed options. This opens up the God Mode toolbar. When I want to simplify screens in MEX, I'll use the MEX security model. I'll define a security group, and then I'll apply various restrictions to that security group so that any users that belong to that group will only see what I want them to see. To use God Mode for security, I select the Security option in the toolbar. And then I either have to select an existing security group to apply my changes to, or I can add a new group. I'm going to add a new group, and I'm going to call it Basic Access. To add a new group, you click on the small button with the white plus here, and I'm going to enter the details of my new group. So now I've created a new group called Basic Access, and I'm going to tidy up the work order screen for those users. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the unnecessary tabs. Once I've selected a security group, then all of these options become available to me for what I can apply to the controls for that security group. I want to remove some tabs, so I choose the Set Not Visible tab here, and then I can click on anything that I don't want to be visible to the users in that security group. Now I've removed five tabs from the Work Order Details screen. As I apply the options to the screens, you can see that anything I apply something to becomes shaded in using the colour that's appropriate to the option that I've applied. In addition to clicking on individual controls, I can also select an area. My organisation only uses dates. It doesn't use the various time fields, so I can just highlight the area of the screen that contains the controls that I want to remove. And now, all of the time fields have been removed from the screen for those users. I also don't want my basic users to be able to change the priority or the due finish date on a work order. So what I'll do is I'll set those fields as read only. I'll choose the read only option and then click on the fields that I want these users to be able to see but not edit. Finally, I don't want them to be able to click on the turn into PM or new asset buttons and that's where Disable comes into play. When I disable something, it's still left on the screen, but it's greyed out and users are unable to select that field or button. I've also decided to remove some unnecessary fields from the Spares tab. In order to be able to navigate around MEX again, I've got to turn off the security configuration. I do this by clicking on Security again, and that allows me to navigate freely in the system. I've decided to take the costing out here, Back to Security, Not Visible, and click on what I want to remove. Back to the Details tab. The next thing that I'd like to do is make the priority and job type mandatory. These users won't be able to exit the details of a work order unless that priority and job type are filled in. To make this happen, I select Mandatory and make sure that my security group is there because mandatory fields are applied at a security group level. And then I get zero value allowed, zero value not allowed. I'll select the zero value not allowed and then click on priority and job type. Those fields are now mandatory. If I want to remove a restriction from a field, and remember that I can tell what fields have restrictions applied to them because they're shaded in, then in both the security setup and the mandatory setup, I can select clear and then click on any restricted fields to remove the restriction. I'll just reapply those two changes. The next thing that I'm going to do is I don't like the term account code. My organization uses cost center for that. So I'll select change names in the God Mode toolbar. 
Name changes are applied to all users, not just users that belong to a particular security group. Once I've selected Change Names, I can click on any label. A label is just any text that applies to a control. For example, that's the label for the account code dropdown. Down here, New is the label for the New button. I'll click on my label, then I can highlight the text and replace it. So now that field will display Cost Center rather than Account Code for all users. Whenever a field has had its label changed, you can see that a small red icon is placed to the left of the label to indicate that field's label has been changed. If I want to revert the change and go back to the standard label, then I click on that little icon and that will remove the change. There we are, back to Account Code. I'll just apply it again. The last thing that I'm going to do is add some extra fields onto the work order. I've decided that the first field that I want is a large text field down the bottom here for my users to enter any incidental notes into. I begin by selecting the Custom Fields option in the God Mode toolbar. Now, that does two things. The first thing that it does is displays a list of all the different types of fields that I can add onto the screen. The second thing that it does is it adds a green grid onto the areas of the screen that I can add fields to. You can see it's quite a large area. The way that I add a field is I select the type of field that I'm going to add and drag it down onto anywhere in the green grid. Once I've added a field in, then I'll get a custom field details pop-up for me to enter some technical details about the field. The comments of information that you need to specify depends on what kind of field you're adding. For a more complete description of how to add in different types of fields, you can refer to the God Mode section of the MEX user guide. Regardless of the type of field, I always have to give it a name. A name is what the field is referred to at a database level. So if I ever want to grab that field out for a report or something like that, then I'm going to need to know what that field's called. I'm going to call it Work Order Notes. Additionally, I can also give it a label, which is just that little piece of text that tells the user what the field is. There we are. Once the field is added, you can see it has these four little handles on its corners. To resize it, I can click on one of these corners and drag it out to size the field in that way. There we go, that's a good size field. I can also drag and drop my fields to a better spot on my screen. Now when I exit the custom fields configuration area, you'll see the field is there as a placeholder, but it's not really fully operational. For a field to become usable, I need to exit the screen that I've been working on and then go back into it. And here we are with a large notes field. Now I've also decided to add an additional checkbox onto the spares tab. Adding a field onto one of the listing tabs is slightly different. I still select custom fields, but you'll see there's no green grid. All I have to do in this case is grab the type of field that I want to add and just drag it down to anywhere inside the tab. Once I've done that, you'll see that my custom field has been added to the right hand side of the listing. When I select my field, I get the same custom field details pop up as before. I give it a name. I'll call it available stock. I give it a label and I'm done. Once again, I have to exit the work order details screen and go back into it to see that the field has properly taken effect. And there we are. Now we're going to see the results of my configuration. I'm going to log in as a user that belongs to the basic access security group that I set up before. When we have a look at the work order details, you'll see for that security group, all the extra tabs have been removed. And if I attempt to edit the priority or the job type, then those fields are read only for me. You can also see that my custom field has been added here and that the account code has been renamed to cost center. Now remember that name changes and custom fields are not limited to a particular security group. When I change a label or add a custom field, it's applied to all users across the system. For more information about God Mode, access the God Mode information page on the MEX website or refer to the MEX user guide. If you have any questions, please contact our support department at support at mex.com.au or call plus 617 Double three nine two four triple seven.